it's really sad the way the way people are acting around this whole crisis. I mean, we're, we're in a banking crisis and it's not getting as much attention as the global financial crisis. And yet I'll argue this is worse. Welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Mark Yusko giving us an update on the current banking crisis and why the government cannot be trusted to take care of people's money. Yusko argues that the fractional reserve banking system is eroding, which is the bedrock of the financial system. His long-held belief that Bitcoin will come in as a reliable alternative asset and withstand economic shocks will provide a safe haven for investors. However, Yusko suggests that there is a sinister plan to funnel deposits into the largest institutions controlled by the government, with the ultimate end game being the introduction of a central bank digital currency. Let's get right into the latest interview with Mark Yusko as he discusses what we can expect with Bitcoin, the crypto market, and the ongoing banking crisis in 2023. Also, we have just partnered with our friends over at Jamie Tree Finance, who have just launched a daily five-minute crypto newsletter. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part, it's absolutely free. So to give out as much value to you as possible, we're sending out a five-minute daily newsletter which will cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news that you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 5,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. By chipping away at the foundation of that, by, by eroding the confidence, in the confidence game. It's, oh, that's a con game, that's a con. No, confidence. It's about confidence and confidence and making capital work. Without yeah. financial institutions, capital sits idle in mattresses and countries implode. That's, look at Greece, okay? When they took all the money out of the banks and they put it in the mattresses, what happened to the Greek economy? It got bought by China. This is the plan. This is the plan. Mm. And it is sinister and it is happening right in front of our eyes. And what what mm. what what's gonna happen on Sunday, right? Save your Sunday. So sinister Saturday, save your Sunday. My guess, you know, First Republic becomes part of JP Morgan this weekend. Uh, you heard it here first. And here's why. If your plan right, is to erode the confidence in the banking system and lead deposits to funnel up into the largest institutions, which mm -hmm. you control at the government level. And there's a great story coming out now about how Mr. Diamond got put in charge of the largest, most powerful bank in the world and the families that he owes in terms of, of helping him with that kind of crazy stuff. Um, but all of that said, if then the next step, the end game is you don't need any of that. Good citizens of America. Mm. We, the government are here to help. And we are going to eliminate all of your fears with this beautiful, lovely, CBDC, you just put your money in the Fed and we will take care of it. You'll never have to worry about it again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you absolutely kidding me? People are gonna fall for this? Look, when, you're, when you get in trouble, like right now, First Republic Bank needs friends. Mm. They're under attack, pack of jackals, short sellers are after, I mean, everybody. It was, oh, it's the evil short seller's fault. No, 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 no. It's not the evil short seller's fault. They're just benefiting from, from the price decline. They're not causing the problem. The problem is caused by this asset liability problem. But at the end of the day, there are people who could solve this problem. However, those people have a different agenda. And I'm telling you, JP Morgan, change the letters, FRC, JPM. Yusko discusses the troubles facing major banks and the role of short sellers in the market.
He argues that they're not causing the problem, but benefiting from the asset liabilities, which will lead to a decline in price, further showing that the industry is in trouble. Well, and here's the crazy thing, right? So it just, just goes to show where we are in the manipulation cycle of, of equity markets. They grew 3%, mm. three, but it wasn't down. And everybody was expecting it to be down again because it had been down multiple quarters in a row. Revenue grew 3%, not 33%, not 103%, 3%. Mm. 3% growers don't get 30, 40 multiples, mm. but they are in this market. I mean, Netflix was like 1.7%. I mean, people are like, oh, that's so awesome. Like, on what planet is 1.7% awesome? It's not awesome. Mm. And same thing with Microsoft. I mean, I mean, Microsoft, Microsoft went up eight and something percent. I mean, this is on a two plus trillion dollar company. And I mean, I, I, I haven't done the actual calculation, but my guess is that that move was bigger than 480 of the S&P 500 companies or 460 or four, I, I don't know what the number is, but some crazy number, just that single move. Um, so the mania around something that isn't negative, like, like, like it's kind GDP, of number, GDP number okay. came out, yeah, 1%. Oh, but it, you know, at least it wasn't, you know, down. Uh, okay. But Year over year, still 1%, again, like fourth quarter, 0.9% year over year. That's a recession. It just is. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's not a bad recession. It's not like a, a face-melting recession. It's a 2001 kind of yuck kind of recession. But in those periods, people just try to look for the positives. And I'm like, okay, it's positive. But now Q2, I think Morgan Stanley came out the first one and said it's going to be slightly negative. That would be ugly, and then they'd have to declare a recession, uh, even though they're, they haven't yet. But earnings are less bad, so that's good. And growth was less bad than we thought, so that's good. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, my experience is long term, that's not a good thing. Short term, it can't be a good thing if you're a speculator yeah. or a trader, but long term, the numbers eventually catch up. Yusko disagrees with the argument that fractional reserve banking is a fraud, as it plays an important role in pooling risk and creating wealth and innovation through funding businesses and asset ownership. Yusko also argues that gold has traditionally been considered money because it exists as an asset that is not tied to any liability. However, he believes that Bitcoin may become the new form of money, as it is not tied to any underlying asset or liability either. This is especially relevant now, as the US government printed half of all the money that had ever existed in the country's history in 2020, leading to a devaluation of the currency. While JP Morgan may be manipulating the price of gold, Bitcoin has been growing in value due to its limited supply and global demand. What do you think about the latest interview with Mark Yusko and his prediction for the volatile banking industry and where Bitcoin is headed in the coming weeks? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.